Uh, so as the platforms are expanding and growing, uh, the mobile platform uh, through the past few years are becoming uh, much more a primary usage for end users and consumers in particular, very important to e-commerce, to actually be accessing the internet and to be doing business. So tablets and smartphones in particular, as you're well aware. Cloud computing is another important trend. Uh, the ability to, uh, to get uh, computing power and software applications running, uh, such as Google Apps or Amazon Web Services, AWS. That is an interesting example. Also, AWS, because Amazon built their services to run their e-commerce uh, business for many years and then decided to go in the business of sharing uh, sharing that infrastructure, as did Google. Uh, they use the same infrastructure that they were driving their search business and now made it a service available for institutions uh, such as colleges and businesses uh, to actually run their apps over uh, the cloud environment. And many, many companies are involved in that today. It's one of the fastest growing forms of computing. It greatly reduces cost, operating, building websites, and maintaining and running and administering uh, the underlying infrastructure. Uh, think about it. Running your startup business or running your, uh, if you're a retailer and let's say you're a fashion retailer, your expertise is in retail and fashion and, and the goods that you're selling. Uh, why not consider a, a, um, an outsourced cloud computing platform for infrastructure, IT, hardware, and services run and maintained by a company like Rackspace or Soft uh, Layer? Uh, and allow you to concentrate on your business, which is retail and fashion. Okay, other internet protocols, utility programs, we mentioned uh, the hypertext protocol, HTTP, SMTP for email, POP, uh, IMAP are all mail protocols, file transfer protocols, as well as uh, security protocols such as SSL. Um, and then there's a variety of utility programs that help IT organizations uh, trace and ping to make sure devices are working and uh, uh, the uh, troubleshooting can take place through trace utilities and things like that. Again, very technical, uh, not needed through uh, uh, as, a, as an end e-commerce business from, uh, from a cloud perspective because that cloud organization would handle that for you. Okay, so the internet today is booming. Um, uh, it boomed without disruption through the client-server model uh, and an hour-class layered architecture, which again, uh, from the bottom up, uh, network uh, technology uh, infrastructure or substrate, transport services above that, uh, and the standards and protocols, then middleware, and then applications. Let's take a look at that in a graphical view. Um, so on the bottom, you got your cables. I don't know if you can see. Uh, hopefully, Oops. here we go. You got your coaxial cables. Uh, you have your wireless uh, Wi-Fi protocol. You have uh, satellite and fiber optic, uh, uh, as well as LANs and DSL um, technology infrastructures. On top of that, your IP internet protocol and your TCP runs and the transport services, and then the middleware. Uh, where security authentication file systems uh, such as FTP and storage repositories, the uh, SAN devices, storage area networks, allow you to use tools like cloud and uh, um, EMC-like devices to take care of your storage. Uh, and then on top, you got your web browsers, email clients, your media players for audio and video, image servers um, for rich imaging, remote login services, uh, single sign-on, and the like. So, internet architecture breaks down into uh, a backbone of high bandwidth fiber active cables. Uh, private uh, uh, networks are owned by a variety of network service providers with huge, huge bandwidth and redundancy built in. Uh, and then you have IXPs, which are hubs or backbones that are more at a regional and local level that are part of the infrastructure ecosystems 
and allows backbone owners to connect with one another. And then you have at the smaller level uh, campus area networks, local area networks within organizations running intranets such as universities or Facebook uh, campus or Google campus, uh, which is a single organization that leases from a regional car uh, carriers or national carriers, but uh, contains uh, that network uh, for their organization, which could be in mo multiple physical locations and likely is. Okay, so a graphic representation of network architecture. So take a look at it here. You got your backbone and your hubs up top, your regional hosts in the middle, uh, your domain, local ISPs using phone lines to the home for clients and, and everyday consumers, and then you have your campus or domain level, uh, which could be a uh, Facebook uh, intranet or Google intranet as well as a uh, campus such in, as in this example, uh, NYU, but it could be Hofstra or any others. So, internet service providers, uh, that, they're the lowest common denominator. Uh, any individual can sign up at home. Small businesses will likely use these and even some uh, smaller size institutions. Uh, can be as, you know, old-fashioned as narrow band or dial-up, but typically it's more broadband because of the proliferation today. So, from Cablevision to the house, uh, Verizon to the house, uh, would be examples of these services. And they run over T1 lines, cable modems, satellites, and uh, digital subscriber lines or DSL. Okay, so intranets also utilize um, TCP IP within a single organization. Kind of touched on that with the campus networks. Um, intranets, again, using the web within a private environment with specific logons and um, uh, areas of access only allowed by uh, and members, and they could be employees or students or faculty. So these are examples of intranets used by university uh, intranets or organizational such as Facebook or Amazon uh, with their, their own employee only or business partners uh, hooking into that. In extranets is probably a better example of business partners. It's formed when firms permit outsiders access to their internal or their intranets. Uh, so uh, supply chain, uh, vendor manage, uh, sourcing. So large um, uh, retailers such as a Walmart is very big in their e-commerce and their utilization and with their relationships with their suppliers of the goods that are sold not only within the stores but on their e-commerce e sites. Uh, to utilize extranets, we utilize tools such as EDI for, for mapping of data. So when it comes into the product catalogs that reside on the Walmart website, it is translated correctly, effectively, and useful to not only the Walmart employees administering that site, but to the uh, consumers actually browsing and looking to purchase on the site. And this works similarly for organizations set up. So this could be Barnes & Noble, it could be uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, it could be any of the above.